special Sunday, the Impact Sunday. This is something we've done since the church was, um, since we first began. We're in our, um, we just celebrated six years as a church. And that first uh, Christmas, we were meeting at West Valley Middle School, just a few of us. But um, we had a special day of giving we called Impact Sunday, where we gave above and beyond to make a difference. And uh, we've seen God take those small seeds and multiply them, take those few loaves and fish and multiply them to, to make a big difference. And the best is yet to come. I really believe that. And so today I just want to share some of why we're doing this, why, why we're a church that's outward focused, why um, we're doing things like Impact Sunday and share some of the miraculous things that God has done and then some things we're dreaming about. Um, so as, before we get into the message, I want to make mention of a few things. We're in an exciting season. Season. We um, are in this Christmas season and some have, have some exciting things coming up at the new year. But now go ahead and put it on your calendar. December 19th, we're having what we call a City Hills Christmas. This is our special Christmas candlelight experience. And it's the best time all year long to invite somebody to come with you. It's so cool. So much fun. And uh, we, we just, it's, it's, it's the story of Jesus in such a powerful way. Uh, this is the greatest story ever told. So invite somebody to come with you and reserve your seats. We do a seat reservation on these big Sundays because we want to make sure we spread everybody out and that you have room for your friends and family to join you. So it's live right now on the church website at cityhills.com or on the app and uh, you can get connected and uh, RSVP your seats, but don't just get seats for you and your family, get seats for friends and family to join you. And we'll have um, four services that day, 8, 30, 10, 11, 30, and the 5 p.m. Hallelujah. You've ever wanted to sleep in? You can do it at the 5. You can come to church at night now, 5 p.m. Um, so much fun. A City Hills Christmas. Also, uh, uh, on December 26th, we're having what we call Sabbath Sunday. We've done this for the last few years. It's an online only Sunday. And the hope and prayer is that you would spend that with your family at home. And we will have a special uh, online experience that will really recap the year, prepare our hearts for the new year. But I want to make mention of that. If you come here, you will be having church alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> on December 26th. And then uh, 21 days of prayer and fasting kickoff on January the 2nd. This is, if you're new to City Hills, this is central. The reason you're hearing people clap their hands because this is the heart and soul of who we are. We seek God. We pray and we fast and we do this uh, twice a year, every January and every August. And we meet here Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Uh, for an hour of prayer and worship. And uh, we do that in person. Also, we stream that live online. There'll be a full worship band and a message every morning. It's just an unforgettable experience. And uh, we've seen God do miracles, miracle after miracle as we seek him. So um, go ahead and prepare your heart for that. And, and at the end of this today, we're gonna have a special time of giving. I know many of us have already given or you've came prepared to give and there's no pressure to, if you're a guest to, to give or anything like that. That's why we've been mentioning this, I think now for six weeks. Uh, because we want you to be uh, what the Bible says, a cheerful giver. We don't want you to give out a compulsion or feeling like you have to. We want you to, hopefully you've prayed and you're gonna um, do what the Lord has led you to do. But this is a special offering we take once a year to help accelerate the vision of what God's doing here at City Hills uh, so that we can pass a legacy on, so that we can pass something on, pass the light of God on from generation to generation and to make a difference, to pass on the grace, the hope, the truth that we've found in Jesus. And I believe it's my responsibility as a pastor to turn us outward, to, to continually challenge us as a family to not be a holy huddle, us for and no more judging each other to see um, who is the holiest among us, you know, and, and just be all about ourselves. Uh, but we're called to be a church that shines the light into our community that makes a difference beyond ourselves. I'm so thankful for what God is doing, but he's not finished yet. As long as there are broken people in our world, as long as there are people that need hope and healing, as long as there are friends and family of ours that need, that need the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're called to go. And so Impact Sunday reminds us that we're not called to form just us four and no more, but we're called to make a difference. And this is from the life and ministry and teaching of Jesus. Matthew chapter five, if you have uh, your, your, your Bible with you, or you can scan the message notes and you can follow along digitally on the screen. I wanna read this famous passage of scripture from the message paraphrase. And Jesus gives us clear instructions on what kind of people the church is called to be. He said this, let me tell you why you're here. If you ever wondered, why am I here? Why is, what's my purpose? What's the plan that God has for my life? Well, let's look at it. Let me tell you why you're here. 
You're here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of the earth. How many of you love salt? Come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. It's Christmas time, lots of salt. God says, where the world is bland, no flavor, you bring flavor and hope. That, 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 that where there is no hope, you bring hope. Where there is no joy, you bring joy. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? Where are the hands and feet? It says, you've lost your usefulness and well, you'll end up in the garbage. Verse 14, here's another way to put it. You're here to be light. Bringing out the God colors in the world because God is not a secret to be kept. I love that. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. And if I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm gonna hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. And now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, do what? Shine. <laughs> Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. Be salt, bring in flavor, and be light in the midst of darkness. A lot of Christians specialize in cursing the darkness. Do you notice how dark it is? Yes, we all notice how dark it is. But Jesus didn't say, now that I've put you on a hill, it's time to judge and really call out all the darkness. He says, now that I put you on a hill, your job is to shine, to be difference makers, to find the dark crevices of the earth that need hope and healing and to take the light. I love how the message puts it that I've made you a light bearer. And that's what I wanna call this message today. I wanna call this message from that thought, carry the light, carry the light. That's what we're called to do, to carry the torch, to carry the light, that, that God is the light but we are the ones who get to carry the light. I was thinking about the Olympic torch that we've all seen the ceremony when it's lit, but I, was, I didn't realize the journey that it takes for that to be lit. It begins actually in Greece every year that there's, an Olympic game, that there's Olympic games. It begins in Greece and it goes as a relay that flame does through thousands of hands across the world before it lights the flame that begins the Olympic games. And, and much the same that the torch has been forever lit by Jesus Christ and what he has done, that we are not that torch. He is the torch. He is the light of the world. He has brought light and we are called to be a church that is full of the fire of God. We're not called to be some dead, holy huddle, frozen, chosen, just go through the motions, dead, dry tradition kind of people. We have the light and the fire of God. We're that early church. When you open up your Bible and you see a people with healings and signs and wonders and miracles and the gospel being preached around the world, that is us. Every, every, every book in the New Testament begins and ends with the word amen. In other words, so be it. It's, a, it's finished. It's kind of like the punctuation mark. It's done. Every, every, every single book except the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the story of the, of the church of Jesus Christ on fire. And the book of Acts, read it for yourself, chapter 28 just kind of ends on a cliffhanger. It just kind of stops like it's not finished. I believe it's because it was never supposed to be finished until Jesus returns again. That we're called to be the same church that you find in the book of Acts, that same powerful, full of the fire of God, anointed that when there are people that have brokenness in their life, you say, you know what? I'll pray for you. That we serve a God who can do the impossible. When there's people that are sick, we're able to pray the prayer of faith. When there are people that need an impossibility, we're able to speak the name of Jesus over every impossibility. The great physician has not went out of business. The way maker is not done yet. That we are that people filled with the fire of God. We're not, we're not victims, we're victors. That the, the, the greatest days, there's been a lot of people uh, belly aching about the church and how hard it's been. And I believe it's the finest hour of the church of the living God if we'll rise up. I'm, I'm fired up today if you can't tell. 
This is who we are. We are carriers of the torch. And I love that it's thousands of people that carry that Olympic torch. All different diversity of people. All, uh, every, way you could, uh, every way you could be different. Young and old, rich and poor, uh, different races, different, all carrying that same torch. And that's what we're called to be. We have been lit by heaven. And I say now that we are a church full of his fire, let us run with that fire. That we are carrying something that was passed down, that was handed to us, and that we will hand to someone else. On my desk for years now has been this Bible. This is my grandfather's Bible. And I took a picture with my grandfather and grandmother with my boys uh, just a few weeks ago on Thanksgiving. And uh, my papa gave me this Bible years ago, and he said, son, I'm having trouble reading it because uh, my cataracts are, are acting up and I can't see print this small, and I need to get me a big Bible. And so from that moment on years ago, this Bible has been wherever um, my desk is or whenever I study the word or whenever I'm, be, and it's, it's literally falling apart. I gotta be careful with it. And it has papers from all types of revivals and different things along the way. But I sit it there uh, on my desk because I'm reminded that I am a carrier of something that was passed. Now, I have a flame that it's not something that began with me, that this represents something that was passed down to me. And that's some of our stories in this place. You have a great heritage of people of faith. And I say to you, run with what God has given you. Run with the message and the word. And maybe you say, you know, Brandon, I don't have that kind of, I would love to have something like that. I don't have anything positive that's been passed down like that. Well, I say you've received something from, from God himself. You have a eternal flame in your hand because of Jesus Christ. He is the light. And now you can pass down that flame to someone else to make a difference. We carry the light carry the light and one day my eyes and I think my way my prescription's going it's going to be soon my eyes aren't going to be able to read the small friend either we pass it down we carry the light same message same message same word same light not trying to invent new light not trying to invent new no we're just we're, 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 we're taking the light we're carrying the light so how do we carry the light? I, I want to share a bunch of exciting things today. And I, uh, there is so, uh, so how do you share? How do you share all the things that the Lord's done? I'm just trying my best to give you a little bit of picture of what, a picture of what the Lord is doing through your giving and generosity. If you're taking notes, we carry the light, first of all, to our city. That's what Jesus told us to do. Start in Jerusalem, then Judea, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. So here's some of the ways that we've served practical needs of people in our city uh, to make a difference, to turn their turn their uh, hearts to God. Um, we figured 6,062 service hours have been given through through this church family, through you, to the city of Knoxville, through all kinds of partnerships and serve projects with all kinds of different ministry partners in our community that we serve and give toward and make a difference with. Um, and over 172 serve projects have been completed just through people serving in our community, just on serve Saturdays and serve days. Um, our food pantry that you gave toward to, to begin last year, that food pantry in just this past year alone has given away over 12,200 pounds of food to people right here in our neighborhood. And we just are in the process of expanding our food, the room where it's gonna be. And it's, that's, that's fresh. That's just from just a couple days ago. And that's about to be stocked with food. And we are praying that our, our impact multiplies by multiples of two or five. In this, this year alone, the need is so great and God is giving us the resources to make a difference. And we're investing in uh, people finding hope and life and having food. Um, it's just awesome, so exciting. Um, over 3,200 meals have been served. <laughs> Someone texted me before this. Uh, that, that I, I think this is super conservative. No, we, I, it's, they said 8,000 uh, meals through our Love People Outreach and Block Party. Just awesome. I mean, the number, I mean, what, what can you say? Just the thousands of meals that have been served uh, to, to people in need, to un, unplanned pregnancy outreaches, school partnerships, just meals just being cared for people being cared for loved on people that are home people without a home people that need hope in life it's just amazing um, a thousand uh, loads of laundry have been paid for on serve days where we pay for laundry and we pray for people and um, that's awesome in the same way 2,400 gallons of gas have been given away um, in this past year alone somebody's like give me some of that hallelujah we gave it away we gave it away. Uh, and we've, and amazing, you'd be amazed just how a little bit of just 
little tangible acts of love and kindness open people's heart. You owe it to yourself to come to a serve Saturday, serve on that gas team and just people will open up their heart, tell you about the needs in their life, let you pray over their family. It's just miraculous. Um, and we get to do that. Numerous outreaches. I just, I could, I could go on and on and on. One of the really cool partnerships has been with um, Thrive this year. Thrive is an incredible ministry in town that uh, it's so much more than an after school program, but they feed kids each and every afternoon, different places. And um, they, they have uh, worship with the kids, teach them about the gospel, help them with their homework, pick them up from school. And uh, this year we were able to start a Thrive or have host Thrive here at City Hills. And every single afternoon after school, there are over 40 kids filling these hallways and worshiping Jesus and getting food upstairs on the lawn. It's just so cool. Um, and, and, um, uh, we, we just conservatively, over 5,247 people were served just through you, through local outreaches, just tangible things. We, with people that we could conservatively say we have, we have been able to uh, touch that many people's lives. Um, and, that's, and that's not even including the Christmas mall that's coming up that we're, we're believing that we'll uh, make an impact in over 500 people. If you'd like to serve or be involved in that, we, there's still room for you to be involved this Friday and Saturday at the Christmas mall. And we do all this so that... People will see our good deeds, see our generosity, and they'll look at Jesus. And we do that locally. Here's the second thing that we do. We carry the light to our nation. Um, we believe that the local church mobilized is the hope of the world. And one of the ways that we really make an impact in our nation is through helping plant healthy, life-giving local churches, just like ours, all around the world. Think about it from the perspective of like the early church. They didn't just build one thing. They, they expanded all over the nation. And so you, through your investment this year alone, have helped plant 64 life-giving local churches throughout our nation. How cool is that? In 2021, of those people that count, of, of the numbers of people that came to those launch days of those, of those new churches, 15,000 people attended on launch day, 500 people gave their lives to Jesus just on launch day alone. You saw a couple of the planters that we're directly connected with um, and the impact that you're making in our nation through, through church planting. So how cool is that? Here's the third thing. We carry the light to our world. We have partners all over the world. You, you heard from a few, but there are many more partners that are helping orphans, making a difference in the lives of people. We focus on strategic missions so that everybody in the world has the opportunity to hear the good news of Jesus. Uh, making a difference. Whenever uh, the, there were earthquakes in Haiti, you, were, uh, you, you, you gave, you, we made a difference on the ground when there are opportunities of brokenness and people that need help and healing. And that's what we're called to do, to take the, the light into our city, to take it into our nation, to take it into our world. And here's the fourth thing. We carry the light. So to our city, to our nation, to our world through the local church. So that light gets to go through the local church. That's a big deal. Jesus died for us to be able to do this right here. Not just to be able to gather as a holy huddle, but to be able to gather, to be able to go to be this people that are on the move, to be a go church, to be a church that's making a difference in the lives of people. Jesus said, this is why I came. I will build, not in your notes or on the screen, but it's from the song we got done singing. That song was directly taken from scripture, the words of Jesus. He said this, I tell you, you are Peter, Matthew 16, 18. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I love that Jesus calls it his church. It's personal. You need a church. It doesn't have to be this church. There's this city. We pray for churches each and every week because this city is full of incredible churches. And we, you don't have to be part of this church. You need, to be, you, need, you need to be part of a church. You need to find the place that you believe in the vision and you can jump in both feet and invest in the local church because Jesus died for that and we exist specifically us as a local church. We exist so that people will know God, find freedom, discover their purpose and make a difference. We want to see people know God. We wanna see lost people saved. 
We wanna see saved people delivered and free. A lot of times people are saved, but they have so much bondage from their past and their hurts and hangups and all these things. We wanna see saved people free. And we, we, we see this happen week after week through our small groups and through our freedom groups and freedom conference. We see people get free from, from their past so that they can discover God put them on this planet for a divine purpose that you are not junk. It's part of our purpose is to help you discover that you were created in the image of God to make an eternal difference on the earth. He didn't just save you to take you. If we were just saved to go to heaven, then the moment we got saved, we just go to heaven. But he leaves us here so that we make an eternal difference so that we will be his hands and feet and discover our purpose. And then together we make a difference. In my mind, are we seeing God fulfill his promise to build his church? And I wanna just share some things that have happened this year alone, just through your generosity, some things that have started, some things that are happening here at City Hills. And this year alone, 160 people have been water baptized. How amazing is that? 160 names of people baptized including this past Friday night at 1501, our young adult service, where we had six people baptized. Come up here, brother. He's in, including Max up there on the left. And I bring him up here because he keeps me looking fresh and clean. He's my barber, everybody. Hallelujah. Yeah, hey, tell him what you told me earlier. So, so basically, I had been struggling for the last couple of years in finding a church and basically believing and Friday night I had this had this feeling of hey you need to get baptized and of course I was like you know what I'm gonna wait until family's gonna be here friends you know what and then I just had a sense of feeling go get baptized so I ran I ran to the back I was the first person running to the back came up front got baptized and as soon as, as soon as I came out the water, I felt warmth, I felt love. It was almost a supernatural feeling. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. And, and ever since then, I have just, I, I don't know, I feel like a completely different man. I feel brand new. I feel like a restart, a kickstart in my heart, in my life. And I just, preach. yeah, I know, I'm about, I'm about <laughs> to preach, you know? But anyways, it... I just, I just feel something God working in me, and it, it's, it's amazing. That's awesome. Max going to get up here and preach for us. It's why we do what we do, guys. It's why we do what we do. See those young people take steps of faith, all of them for the first time, to be water baptized, to obey the Scripture. Uh, we added 1501, which is our young adult worship night. We've seen it go from about 20 people to over 140 plus young adults every single time. I just say that to let you know it's growing. It's making a difference. And I believe God's put us on the doorstep of 30,000 college students on purpose. And we've not even scratched the surface beginning to make an impact on young adults and college students, on the next generation, on middle school, high schoolers, uh, to make a difference in the lives of the next generation. We've graduated um, our first cohort of the City Hills Leadership Academy, and we did this this past Wednesday night at First Wednesday. If you were here, it was an amazing experience. We saw uh, our first cohort of 15, and this is something that God's put on our heart from the very beginning of the church, that we're called to build leaders for the kingdom of God. I didn't know what that looked like, and as God has put an amazing team around here, we've been able to flesh that out, and we're seeing God do that, and we have not even begun to see, I believe, what God wants to do in building leaders for the kingdom of God, not just the local church, but whatever sphere of influence God's called you to. There were business leaders and students and, and moms and dads, and there were all kinds of different people that were part of this first cohort. And that's our heart, that God would raise up leaders so that you could take the light of the gospel into our world. And that happens because of your giving. If you'd like to be involved in the next cohort of it coming up this spring, you just go on the website um, at cityhills.com and jump in to the City Hills Leadership Academy. It's so awesome. We added the 5 p.m. service this year. Who would have thought people would come to church at night? But they are. Hallelujah. So if you've ever wanted to sleep in, this is the service we're trying to keep, make room in. So hallelujah. You can sleep in and come to church at night if you would like to. And uh, it's so exciting. And I, this past month, this is just a testimony of what God's doing. This past month, we've averaged during At The Movies, 1,359 people in person coming to church each and every week in person. 
I say all that to say this is miraculous because that's nearly a thousand people more in person than we had around the same time frame a year before. To God be the glory. In the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of all we've been walking through, God is building his church. That doesn't even count those watching online. And we average over 400 devices logged in each and every week at church online. We don't know how many people that is. That's a lot of devices. It's a lot of people watching. And that's because of your giving. God is growing the church. God is doing what only he can do. It's, it's what he said he was gonna do. Through your giving, we've expanded parking in this past year. We've added 40 parking spaces and the, and the heavy equipment stole my thunder. But I was going to tell you that we just signed a contract to start adding 70 more parking spaces, but they've already started it. <laughs> so whenever you go outside, look to your left. You'll see where our parking's going to be. And so um, we, it's going to be a long way to walk. So we need some people on a parking team. Hallelujah. Go parking team. All those are room for people. We have began um, exterior renovations of the building this past year. Hallelujah. Here's a picture of what it used to look like for if you, I know you didn't forget, but if, if you ever do forget. <laughs> God uses city hills to, to take things and change the way they look. We used to have church in an old DMV and turn into a church and, and, and we went from barn to a beautiful building. You know, it's uh, been amazing. And that's because of your giving. Lights have been added in the parking lot this year. Our kids, last year we gave toward our kids restroom project so we can have restrooms in our kids area. That took so much longer than we expected and anticipated with the city and permitting and all those things. But I announced for the very first time, uh, we have received our permit to start the kids bathroom room project. Hallelujah. <laughs> I saw a statistic that said 80% of people that are, say they're Christians make that decision before the age of 30. And that's why we put so much resources, emphasis, effort, staffing, all the things into the next generation. And we are just getting started because we're called to make a difference in our kids, our middle schoolers, our high schoolers, our college students, our young adults, because we believe God's called us to raise up an army of world changers that will carry the light and make a difference. Now, and that's why we're dreaming. And one of the, I just wanna share a little bit what I'm dreaming about. I feel like um, God has given us this facility. It's been miraculous. Over 140,000 cars pass it every single day on the interstate. Now we have a sign where you can see right on the building that we have 67,000 square feet, plenty of room to grow. We're right here close to the university. We have a lot of opportunity to reach out right where we are. And I just have so much peace about pursuing uh, the expansion of what God has given us right here. And just, just to, just two things I'm dreaming about. I would love to see us be able to expand our kids' auditorium and be able to put over 120 seats in there to go from now we have about 40 or 50 seats in our K through K, K through five auditorium to be able to have over 120 seats with an upstairs kids game area, big slide coming down, lots of places for them to have fun without even taking away from our current space. And maybe even adding in some of those rooms that are tall, being able to add a floor in there and be able to have more rooms uh, to be able to reach more people. And I'd love to see, we're exploring these options and what we could do to make a difference in our kids, to make a difference in the next generation. And then also to expand this auditorium that we're sitting in right here. Here's just a video of a friend of mine's church that added risers into their facility and gave more, uh, more room, more seats and all those things. And I, I just feel like we haven't tapped into the complete potential of what God has given us right here. And so in the next year, we wanna start pursuing what would it look like if we could go from having 100, 720 seats in here to maybe, maybe having 1,200 seats or 1,300 seats or 1,500 seats, who knows? But, but, but to pursue to say, God, what you're doing here, we recognize it. We're not doing this to try to grow. We're doing this because God is building his church and we want to make sure there's always a seat for someone who's broken. There's always a seat for people that need hope and healing and, 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 and that we would be people that make a difference um, as a church family in the lives of people. That's exciting stuff, isn't it? So exciting what God's doing. I want to share just a couple truths about giving before we, before we give today and go. First, first of all, if you're taking notes, uh, we are blessed to be a blessing. We're blessed to be a blessing. You say, I don't feel blessed. You live in the United States of America. We are a blessed people. We are a blessed people. We are blessed with more. We need to know what the more is for. We need to know that there's more to this life than this life. That when we invest things into the kingdom of God, 
These are the parts of the scripture that I don't even understand how it all works. But the scripture says that we, there's treasure that's stored up in heaven. I, I think a lot of times we are afraid to give because we feel like, I was thinking, what is the negative thing about giving? The only negative about giving that I could come up with in my mind is the thought that when I give, I have less. Simple, right? That's the only negative in my mind is that when I give, I have less. But the difference is when you give to the kingdom of God, according to the scripture, you're, you are not ending up with less. You're actually sowing a seed. I grew up out in the country in Western Kentucky where my grandparents had a garden. I don't know if you've ever seen anyone sow seeds in a garden. That's where actually our food comes from for anybody who's under 30 years old. (laughs) But never one time did I see my grandmother weeping while putting a seed in the ground. Oh, I'm so sad to put that seed in the ground. Oh, this tomato seed is so sad. Never. She would always plant with expectation and hope because she knew the soil was good. She had already tilled the soil and she knew the seed was good. And she just knew with a little bit of water and a little bit of time, there was gonna be a harvest. And I wanna say when we give to the kingdom of God, we shouldn't give with sadness. We should give with joy. Why? Because the soil is good soil because it's the kingdom of God. And we serve a God, he's the Lord of the harvest. And just a little bit of water and a little bit of time, who knows what God will do in this life and in the, in the world to come. Jesus said this, now that I put you here on a hilltop, city hills, shine. We are literally a church on a hill. Couldn't have chose the name better, right? That was God. So now that we are blessed, let's be a blessing. Let's continue to be a blessing, to make a difference. The more God blesses us with, the more God expects us to be a blessing. That God is making us and building us into generous, generous people people of generosity, the generous people in our lives, they've changed our lives. Here's the second truth is we can't outgive God. I found this to be true. I dare you try to outgive God. The reason we give on days like today is because we serve such a generous God who gave his only son, who gives us blessing after blessing, miracle after miracle. And, and, and as we give, God blesses so that we can be a blessing. Some people have perverted this idea, this truth, and, and just teach that it's only prosperity in that we give. People say you give to get. And what a sad thing. We don't give to get. We get to give. Amen. And it's, we all want God to use us in a great way. But if we want God to bless us in a great way, we have to expand the bottom of the funnel, not just the top of the funnel. We want the top of the funnel to be big in our lives, but at the bottom of the funnel, our generosity is so small. But what I found, the more that I expand the bottom of that funnel and generosity and time and resources and all the things that God's blessed us with, the more God continues to expand the top of the funnel and allows us to be a conduit of his blessing. That's why Jesus says, shine. How do you shine? I love what he says. Keep an open house. In other words, don't shut the doors and say, oh, it's just us four and no more. The church is big enough. How big does the church need to be? I don't know. Talk to Jesus. It's his. It's his church. Keep an open house. Keep the doors open. Be generous with your lives. There's almost nothing God won't do for the person who is willing to use their life to help someone else. Jesus said this, I guarantee you this. Anyone who gives up anything for the kingdom of God will certainly receive many times more in this life. Say, how does that work? I don't know. But I know this, God is faithful and he says, and will receive eternal life in the next world to come. There's something connected. As we are generous, God says, I'm gonna bless you. And I can show you this time. It's the number one promise in the scripture, generosity, because I think our number one issue would all, the Lord knew would be selfishness and stinginess. So he said, so trust me. And so we're blessed to be a blessing. We can't outgive God. And here's the last and final thing. Let's never forget, it's not about us. Jesus said, by opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God. 
So there's something connected as we are generous with what we have. There's something connected that it's not about us because it turns people's focus and attention on our God. Whenever I was praying about what to share um, in this message on this weekend, I, I just could not get this idea out of my mind about carrying the light and specifically about a poem that um, I've been reading for the last few months. I'm saying since, since September, most nights before I go to bed, I read this poem because it's one of the things God's really dealing with me about in this season. And I think, I believe it's what God is dealing with us about if you call City Hills home. And I just wanna share it to you, share it with you. I put it on the screen so you can follow along. The author is unknown, but simply called the torch bearer. It says this, the God of high endeavor gave me a torch to bear. I lifted it high above me in the dark and murky air. And straightway with loud hosannas, the crowd proclaimed its light and followed me as I carried my torch through the starless night. Till drunk with people's praises and mad with vanity, I forgot twas the torch they followed and fancied they followed me. Then slowly my arm grew weary, upholding the shining load and my tired feet went stumbling over the dusty road. I fell with the torch beneath me in the moment the light was out. When lo, from the throng, a strapling sprang forth with a mighty shout, caught up the torch as it smoldered and lifted it high again, till fanned by the winds of heaven, it fired the souls of men. And as I lay in the darkness, the feet of the trampling crowd passed over and far beyond me, its paeans proclaimed aloud. And I learned in the deepening twilight, this glorious verity. Tis the torch that the people follow, whoever the bearer may be. I feel like the Holy Spirit's been saying to me, Brandon, giving you an opportunity season to hold the torch. You've received it. God gave it to you. Understand you're not the torch. That's the truth of this poem. It's a cautionary tale. This man that was carrying the torch thought the people were following him. But the truth is, it was the torch that they were following. He is not the torch, but he was the torch bearer. And I say, City Hills, we are not the torch, but we are the torch bearers. And I, I, I've never, if you've been here, I've never given those numbers or anything like that ever in the history of the church. I've never done that publicly. But I do all that today and to share all those things to tell you this, I believe right now God is entrusting this church family with a torch of the gospel in Knoxville, Tennessee for this season. It's, it's his torch. It's a stewardship on our part. It's temporary. But it's not an accident that you're here in the room. If you're new, if you're maybe here for the first time, God's drawing your heart here. Why? Because God's calling us to to carry the torch in the middle of a dark season, in the middle of a dark night, to join with the other churches in our city that are carrying the torch. God's called us to do this. God's called us to be here. So I say, let's take it serious. And let's understand most of all, it's not about us. All this is not about us. It's not about our buildings. It's not about our, even our, all the works that we do. It's not about, it's all about doing everything we can do so that people that are broken will see Jesus and have hope and have healing and, and get a fresh start and go to heaven. So if you've ever wanted to be part of a move of God, you're in it right now. You're in a move of God right now. So don't take it for granted. We're carrying a torch. Let's not get it confused. It's not us, but we're having an opportunity to steward it. So run, run, run with your giving, run with your serving, come to next steps today, get involved. Don't allow yourself to just stand still with the torch. 
It's not about us. Psalm chapter 115, verse one, I'll conclude with this, says, not unto us, Lord, not unto us, but to your name be the glory. That's what we're called to do. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I wanna just ask you a question. What's the Holy Spirit speaking to you through this message? What's the Holy Spirit saying to you today? Lord, it's a privilege to just be a torchbearer. God, it's a privilege. Lord, forgive me whenever I get it confused. Forgive me when I think it's about me. Jesus, it's all about you. God, help us as a church to keep the main thing, the main thing. Lord, give us wisdom. Thank you for what you've done. We're so thankful, God, but we're looking forward with anxious anticipation for what there's still to do. We say, God, build your church and do it through me. Do it through my life. But I pray for anybody who's been hurt by the church. Lord, no one hurt the church more than, no one's been hurt by the church more than you, Lord. Lord, help us to forgive, to pick up the torch again, and to move forward, God. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being part of your church. In Jesus' name. No one looking around today, if you're here and you say, Brandon, I've been far from God, I don't want this service to go by without giving someone an opportunity to know God, to trust him with your life. It begins with a simple prayer. This is just taking a next step today, a step of a fresh start with God. I'd love to lead you in that prayer. If that's you, you say, Brandon, I've been far from God. I invite you to pray a prayer of surrender, maybe for the first time or a first time in a long time. And church family, let's all join together with those that are praying because we all need a fresh start with God. Let's pray this together. Say, Jesus. I surrender my life to you. Thank you for giving your life for mine. Forgive me of my sins. I give you all my failures. I give you my hopes and my dreams about the future. My life is yours. Be my Lord. Be my God. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I choose today to trust you completely. I choose today to follow you wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do from this moment forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for what you're doing in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise as we stand to our feet? Yeah. Wow. So awesome. You just prayed that prayer with us today. Text the word CH Hope to 97,000. We'd love to help you on the journey however we can. So proud of you. So excited. It is supernatural, Max, to take what he said. It's supernatural when we take steps of faith and trust the Lord with our lives. Well, today we're going to give in this offering, the special time of giving. If you came prepared to give today, there's different ways to give. You can give online. You can give via text. You can also give in person. Our ushers are coming. We're going to pass the buckets. You can fill out an envelope or uh, give however you would like. Uh, there's, there's also boxes at the door you can give. And they're going to leave this slide up so you can see how to give. But uh, we're going to give in faith today. Let me, let me lead us in prayer before we give. Lord, thank you so much. Lord, we give today not because we have to, but because we get to. We give today because you first gave. Lord, we give with joy in our hearts. God, we are cheerful givers. And we say thank you, Lord. It's an honor to be part of your church. And we give, Lord, a seed expecting you to do what only you can do to change lives. Lord, to feed hungry souls, to feed hungry, hungry lives. Lord, to do what only you can do, Jesus. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.